Hey y'all, Joseph Lipper here. At the beginning of each season, Vex usually releases a video about the Hero Bot and what it can do and some upgrades you might want to do to it. This year though, they haven't really done that, so I want to make one for you that shows you exactly how it works and some stuff that I have worked on to improve it and really make it a lot better than it is. So let's get started. So the Hero Bot looks something like this, and we've got our intake down here. That is spun by these chains, which are spun by these gears back here. That's how that works. Then we've got our chain up here, and this just conveyors the blocks up to the top of the conveyor and out the back. And this whole thing goes up and down. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Herobot is pretty simple, although it does have quite a few issues that I am going to show you some of the solutions that I came up with that I would really recommend you use because they make it a lot better. The first thing I noticed was that these sprockets here, there was a bigger sprocket on this bottom one and it would hit this sprocket up here. And maybe it's just bad tolerancing on my part, but those were really, really close. So one thing that I did and I would really recommend you do is make this bottom sprocket, make it um, make it a little bit smaller. The, it was the next size up, the 18 tooth. We're gonna go ahead and make it that 12 tooth and that's gonna work a lot better. It doesn't really matter how fast this spins. I, I know, yes, it will change the speed of this, but don't worry about that. It'll work just fine and it works fine on mine. Now, the next thing I would really recommend you do is this motor by default has a green cartridge in it. That's what they recommend you do. It has one of these green cartridges and that makes it spin really, really fast. Um, if you do the math, this is spinning a 36 tooth gear, which is spinning a 12 tooth gear, which means that this would be spinning at 600 RPM, which is really, really fast for any sort of conveyor like this and is not recommended for really any conveyor unless it's really well tuned. And this one is pretty uh, low quality. So I would not recommend you spin it that fast. This red cartridge will put it at half the speed. So it'll be uh, 300 RPM. And that will make this spin at a much more reasonable speed with plenty of torque to get the blocks up your conveyor. Now, the last thing I would recommend is adding some rubber bands. Now, I personally love rubber bands, but I also think they're really useful here. And there's two places. The first one is right here, these black rubber bands here. These ones pull this down, which is gonna push that side up. And that's gonna make it a lot easier for this to bounce up and down and score the blocks a lot easier when they come out the back. Because before, you would have to have the block lift up the whole weight of this upper part, and that's really heavy for the block, and that sometimes won't go over very well. Now, the next place I would add some rubber bands is right here. And what this does is this is gonna rubber band up this part of the conveyor just a little bit. It's gonna pull it this way so that way this can go down. Sorry, did I say rubber band up before? I meant to say rubber band down this part and it's gonna give it a little bit more pressure to give this roller a little bit more grip to grab the block. Cause sometimes you will get this dead spot in here where uh, the, the roller doesn't really reach the block. And you can see on mine it does, and that's because I made the last modification. That last modification is up here. And it's hard to see, but on this bearing flat, I subtracted a spacer in here, so it's kind of inside the C-channel now in a little bit. And that's really important because that allows this thing that hard stops on it, this standoff, uh, it hard stops on this uh, bearing flat here. And, well, my standoff's a little bit loose, but it hard stops on the bearing flat there, and that is what limits the inward uh, motion of these two these two wheels here. I didn't have the right wheels, so they're omni wheels, but they work the same. Um, and so what this does is when you get the block in there, it gives it a lot better chance for uh, it to get up in there and into your conveyor. And then I can score it out the back. So those are the modifications that I made and that I would really suggest you do. Is this a good robot? No. Should you build it? Yes. Should you bring it to your first competition? Probably not. If you can help it, I would use this as a starting point and then build a much better robot, either a version of this with maybe something more like an intake like this guy over here or something a little bit different, something a little bit better, something with a little bit better processing of the blocks as they can get into the goals. Because as you can see, the Herobot was slow. It didn't work super well. You have to kind of crash into the wall to pick up the blocks well. It has quite a few downsides, but it's a great starting point for getting started. So if you're a new team, I would totally recommend you build it and then build your own robot after that and bring that to your first competitions. 
So, good luck in pushback. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.